Okay, hi guys. Welcome back to X's and O's. I'm your host, Shannon Beveridge. Thanks for joining me for another week and another episode. I can't believe, I think this is episode 25, which is absolutely crazy. Uh, we have not missed a week in 25 weeks. I, I feel like people didn't know I could do it, but look at me go. And when I say people, I mean myself. <laughs> but look at me go. Look at you go, Shannon. If you follow me on Instagram, then you may have seen I was teasing that something was dropping on Friday. I had some technical difficulties. Imagine that. I, I think if there are technical difficulties to be had, I will have them. I'm like, please, sir, can I have some more? Can I have some more technical difficulties? I love them. I have them all the time in any way I possibly can. And I did on the drop of my Friend of Dorothy collection. And yeah, so my website wouldn't accept any payments. So obviously it did not work. It is live now. If you're watching this, then my Friend of Dorothy full collection is live right now. And I'm so, 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 so stoked. I know a lot of you I'm just going to explain it for anyone who doesn't know. Basically, the hat I'm wearing right now, I designed almost like a year ago now, probably. can't remember exactly when it came out the first time. But if you're not familiar, Friend of Dorothy is a way that queer people used to tell other queer people they were gay before um, being out and open was really an option. And the reason I made the hat in the first place is because I personally do not identify with the rainbow and like the way that it looks obviously identify with the rainbow, all for it, all for the flag. Um, but just like in outfits and clothing, it's not really my style. I don't really like, I don't wear a lot of color in general. So I wanted to create something that would queer flag to people without it being like a rainbow. It's pride, it's pride related clothing that isn't fully rainbow attire. Uh, you guys really liked this hat. I've sold it twice. Now it's going to be out again, which is awesome. So if you missed it the other times, for all the people who've DM'd me in the past, you can buy it now. But also you can buy a bunch of other stuff. There are sweatshirts, there are crew necks, there are long sleeve shirts, there are t-shirts, there are shorts, um, and carabiners. So if you really want a queer flag, there are carabiners for you, which I'm so excited for. I think it's so fun. And I think the carabiners are also awesome because it's like a, a lower price point. So I'm hoping that anyone and everyone can afford to get one. If you really want it, there's something there for you. And I'm so excited. I'm just in general, I'm really stoked. I'm, I'm really so happy with the reception to this design when I made it and like the concept. And yeah, I just want to keep making things that are in this similar vein also like this vibe of queer flagging without the rainbow so people can clock you when you're out and about but you can also feel safe in a way because it's kind of a uh, if you know you know thing and I think that's like a cool little I don't know it's like a little inside insider information situation so I hope if you like the hat you'll check it out check out all the things I'll, I'll have them on the screen if you're watching but if you're just listening you can go to my website now this is living dot shop I think is what it is but yeah it'll be in the link below also so if you want to look, I'm so proud of it. I'm so happy. I'm so stoked. So I hope you'll check it out. Also, it's all a pre-sale. So if you buy it today, it will take time before it gets to you. And I just want to mention that it's also a new distributor. I'm working with a new company. Uh, a, I'm like fully collabing with this company. We're like working together. I'm so stoked. They're called Terminal. It's queer owned, which I fucking love. You guys know I love that. And I'm honestly, I'm like building out like a very gay team like queer woman team which is awesome my manager is a lesbian uh my merch now is owned by a lesbian my agent is gay like we have queerness in and around every part of the business that I'm working on and that is just like my dream come true I fucking love working with gay people I love working with gay women too it's awesome it's really really awesome um and I should know that if you bought my merch before, this is the first time I'm last merch drop I did for the podcast. I worked with a different company. Uh, before that, I used to send everything out all by myself. The last few things I've done. Now I have this new company. So if you had any issues with your order in the past, the last thing 
It did not go perfectly, seamlessly great. This will be perfectly, seamlessly amazing. So if you want to purchase any of the Friend of Dorothy stuff, you are in good hands. I am in good hands. My business is in good hands. Finally, I'm so happy. Please, please check it out. Please. Okay, quickly, mental health check. My mental health, again, still good. We're rocking and rolling and summer's coming and I'm so happy. I think for so many people, I know for myself, the warmer weather does wonders, wonders, wonders for my mental health. And like just the sun and the sun setting later, wow, it's like a game changer. So I'm hoping we're just going to keep rising up. It's going to keep getting better. Keep getting better. It really does get better. Being gay, being alive, it can get better, y'all. Don't don't knock it till you try it. And the last thing I want to talk about before this week's episode is I just want to acknowledge that this may be a controversial guest to have on the podcast. If you're watching this, it is Tuesday. The episode comes out on Wednesday. I've posted a teaser so people know that JoJo's the guest. I know that JoJo is a controversial guest based off the comments that I'm getting right now. Um, I just want to let you know that my intention with this podcast is just to have conversations, well, My intention with this podcast is to create a safe space to have conversations about queer relationships and sex. And I am so happy and blessed that I have the opportunity to do that. And I'm stoked that I have the ability to reach out to people like Jojo, who are huge people that she's a mega celebrity. They're talking about her on SNL and she was sitting in my bed having a conversation for all of you. If It's not your cup of tea. You don't have to watch this week's episode. And um, I just hope that you will, if you do, if you do decide to watch, be kind, just be kind. It's like, so it's really not that hard. And when I say be kind, I don't mean you can't have feedback and you can't have an opinion. You can have an opinion. You can have, you can talk about whatever you want to talk about, but you can do it in a way that is kind. And yeah, yeah. If you, I don't understand how that's not possible. That's very possible. You can do it. You can do it. And if you have nothing kind to say, and if your opinion is just like, just to to add noise or to be like unkind, just don't do it, please. Let's be kind. Okay. Also, if you don't like the song Karma, you're lying. There, I said it. With that being said, enjoy this week's episode. Thanks, Jojo, for coming on. Have a good week, everybody. Happy hump day. Also, huge, huge shout out to Hinge for sponsoring this episode of X's and O's. Love you guys so much. Thank you. Okay, hi guys. My name is Shannon Beveridge. Welcome back to X's and O's. Today, I have the most iconic guest ever, Jojo Siwa. That's not true. It is so true. No. That is not true. You You, have had way more iconic people laying right here. You have had way more. I'm so happy you're here. You guys... I'm sure you know Jojo Siwa, but Jojo, you... I don't. <laughs> Tell me who she is. <laughs> I mean, we're still getting to know ourselves every day, right? True. Yeah. Bad. I'm obsessed with karma. I'm Thank obsessed. you. Also, I don't know if this is bad, but Kat played me a snippet of your new music, too. Oh, and I wonder which one she played so you. so good. Um, what is it called? Guilty? Yep. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's so good. I'm so excited. When is, Wait for the video for that one. When is it's it coming videos. out? That one won't be up for, for a second. It's not next. Next, we're putting out... I haven't talked about this yet, but whatever. I don't care. Um, <laughs> next, we're putting out one called Choose Your Fighter, and that one will come out, like, end of May, top of June. Okay. And then I would say, like... It's projected end of June, but I think it'll be top of July. Okay, for the, cool. For the big dog. Are you doing anything for Pride, like performances and stuff? Yeah, I actually am going to Pittsburgh cool. Pride, London Pride, Fuck yeah. and um, uh, Chicago Pride. Hell yeah. And LA Pride. I just got booked for LA Pride. Okay, you're going to be so everywhere. Sorry. I'm going to explode. I'm I so happy <laughs> for you. That's so awesome. Brace for impact. Do you, people were freaking out about your performance. That was in Miami, right? Yeah, that was Miami Pride. That was wild. I didn't really know what to expect. Because, I mean, it was my first thing out of the gate since being a kid performer. Mm-hmm. And so I, you know, I, I had my expectations from when I was a kid. Yeah. But I didn't, I didn't know how many people went to Pride. I didn't know how it worked if they came for my performance, if they came for the whole day. Like, yeah. I didn't know anything. And so whatever, I go out on stage. I, I do my thing. I can only see to people. Yeah. Like, there is no break in people, but I still, I I don't think these numbers are as crazy as they were, 
But I get off stage and this guy comes up to me and he's like, you don't know who I am, but I am the president of Miami Pride. He's like, this is my event. I put all this on. And my mom was like, talk to him, Jojo. He has something to tell you. And I was like, oh, okay, okay, okay. And I was like, nice to meet you. You know what I mean? (laughs) And I was like, thank you so much for having me. Like, this was unreal. So happy to be my first performance. And he was like, you have no idea. He said, your performance was the highest capacity we've ever had. No way. And I was like, no way. You're lying (laughs) to me. He's like, I'm not lying to you. And he's like, I want to tell you how many people were here. But like, you're you're not going to believe it. And I was like, tell me. And it was 55,000. And Shut I was like, no way. Shut the fuck up. There's no way. That's There's crazy. No way. I couldn't believe it. He's like, that the biggest like you've ever performed to? That's the biggest I've ever performed to. I did an arena tour. And so mm-hmm. those, the biggest of those crowds got were 17,000, 18,000, which is still a yeah, ton. That, I mean, yeah. It's a couple. It's a <laughs> Just a few. But. No, 55,000 55, people. Now, once is, yes. I mean, that was, I mean, it was nutty. Like I. I just remember, I didn't really know how to feel after the performance. I was kind of numb. And then I just started sobbing. And yeah. I was like, wow. That's amazing. Also, I feel like the reception to that performance was awesome. People were it like was, really, really proud of you. Thank you. It was exactly what I wanted it to be. You yeah. know what I mean? I wanted people to talk about it. I wanted people to feel like, well, what is she doing? Mm-hmm. I wanted people to just word of mouth. And it, <laughs> I it mean, worked. people are definitely talking about you, I feel like. Ah, yep. <laughs> you it feel was like I do. <laughs> Okay, huge shout out to Hinge for sponsoring this episode of X's and O's. I appreciate y'all so, so much. As you know, X's and O's is a podcast about queer relationships and sex. What better way to find your next relationship than Hinge, the app that is designed to be deleted? In 2022, Hinge launched its LGBTQ plus prompts with the support of GLAAD. And now they have a list of questions that you can answer and put right on your profile and immediately start conversation about your queerness, about your journey, about yourself that hopefully will spark love. Love, y'all. Love is awesome. If I were building my profile, I might use the prompt, I feel proudest when, especially with the pride coming up right around the corner. Can you believe it's almost June? What? Where? Huh? Where did the year go? And my answer to that question would be, I feel proudest when I am out with my gay friends, just being ourselves, doing our thing, no matter what that is. It could be at a farmer's market. It could be at a restaurant. It could be anywhere. But when we're just like being openly queer and people are perceiving that and there's like no shame and we're just being ourselves, that's when I feel proudest. And pride is a great time to do that too. I can't wait to go to some pride, some pride parades. Who's going? Where will you be? I'll be at some. Reminder again, download Hinge. You can click the link in my bio to directly download Hinge. And I would really appreciate it. If you click the link, then uh, yeah, they'll know that you came from me, which is awesome. Go find your love. Good luck. You can do it. <laughs> Literally, I feel like I can't go on like TikTok and not see someone saying something about you. Just at- making a cake on my face yeah. or just something. How are you? How am I? Yeah. I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm good. I I've definitely gone through my phases of being mm-hmm. okay, being not okay. I, I'm good. I'm chilling. I'm I'm happy. I'm working a lot right now. We're working mm-hmm. on what's coming up next. And it's fueling my fire. Yeah. You know, I, I gotta remember that I asked for this. I asked for people to talk. I didn't care if it was good talk, I didn't care if it was bad talk, but I wanted people to talk. Mm-hmm. And it's working. I mean, it's for sure working. <laughs> people are talking. <laughs> But I also am like, I, th- I feel like people do not remember that you're 20 years old. For sure, no. Like, I really yeah. don't think they do, which is crazy because I feel like for so long, everyone was kind of like almost like infantilizing you, like being like you were like 15, yeah. even though you were 18. They just But ma- now you're 20 and people are like, why is JoJo acting like you're 20? 20. Yeah. You're 20. Yeah. They made a joke on SNL the other night. Yeah, um, I did see that. Yeah, and they made fun of me for three and a half minutes, but I thought it was hilarious. And also, like, the biggest fucking honor to be made fun of on SNL. Like, that's an honor. I mean, I yeah, I, totally. I'll I, take it. But, and also, I feel like, I mean, yeah, I guess it does. It feels like making fun of you for sure, right? It's. But it was like. It, I'm like, is it endearing at all? Like, yes. I kind of thought it was, some of it is sweet and nice. It's the fact that but, they're sitting in a meeting going, what can we do this yeah. week? And somebody said, why don't we do a JoJo Siwa skit in the SNL fucking boardroom? Yeah, and it fucking worked too. It, it the worked. thing is, is like everything that, anything that is uh, like touching you 
you've got like what is it the Midas touch or whatever Every, you know people have said that to me since I was Little. 11 they've been like everything you touch turns to gold and I'm like thank you <laughs> but I work really hard for that <laughs> no so, it's deserved it's deserved you. it's thank not you. just like obviously it's not like I feel like you're the smartest person online. Thank you. Genuinely. People forget that I've been doing it for a really long time. Yeah. And I grew up with it. And I know the ins and the outs and the back ends and the forward ends. And thank you, though, for that. No, I mean, seriously. that really does mean a lot. I know how to play the game and I know how to entertain. Yeah. And that's my biggest thing is I think a lot of people take it a little too seriously, which is okay. But for me, it's like my job is is to entertain i was and not like my job to make money i mean my job on this earth yeah my job on this earth is to entertain people and like you're calling almost right that's why i'm here i guess yeah, i guess i guess you had no choice and you've been doing it for so long i feel like also i was just watching your the dance mom's reunion thing yeah. oh god how it, was it i didn't watch it you yet. didn't watch it oh my gosh it's so good but no. i did i feel like it seemed like even from a really young age like you understood the game of yes. like what the entertainment industry is totally. which makes no sense why did you know that i don't know why it's did you so know weird i uh, apparently now i'm a time traveler i saw yeah. this thing on tiktok and i was like wow i actually do Could believe be. that so maybe maybe i maybe i had a past life where i did this but i think i can see what i want and where i want to be and i can figure out how to get there mm -hmm. and it's in a weird way, it's all I know. Even before I was a, a, a public figure, you know, my mom, I'd be two before years old. Before you were a public figure? So what, when you were like five? <laughs> I was like literally <laughs> three. When no, you were literally. not a public figure? Uh, eight and under. Like, were you conscious then even? That's <laughs> no. crazy to think about. It's my favorite when people make a joke like, oh, when like you went out to recess, I was like, I didn't have a child. Yeah. I didn't do that. But thank you. <laughs> oh my God, I'm going to cry. <laughs> no, 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 no. I had... I had unique, a unique. different, yeah, yeah, unique, a very unnormal, but good, you know, yeah, I, yeah. Be I, mean, I am without it. Look where you are now. But I just wonder, like, is it like an intuitiveness? Like, what is it that makes you understand that, like, all the feedback, you can't take it all to heart? Or are you just like compartmentalizing everything into different parts all the time? Oh, I came up with some how to help myself this morning. I think I'm good at disassociating. Yeah. Like I'm sense. good at putting it out there and then moving on and whatever happens that you know what I mean? Yeah, totally. And I think one of the reasons with karma specifically how I was okay to just kind of like keep it pushing was because I was already working on an next project. Got it. Yeah. It was like the week before karma came out, we started working on that song that cat played you. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, good luck, karma. Hope you do good. You know yeah. what I mean? I think I'm good at, I mean, disassociating literally is the word. Well, you're also busy as fuck. I'm busy as shit. So and it's I, like, okay, this thing is done. And now I'm already, but it's not done. You're never done. You're, you're never always done. working on something else. One thing, yeah, that I kind of had to swallow over the last few years and really learn about myself is it never goes away for me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? There is no end. There is no seven to nine. There's no... In general, as an influencer, I mean, your life, your career is selling your Yourself. life. Yeah, you're literally giving up your life. And once I kind of realized that, I stopped treating my job, essentially a career as a job or job mm -hmm. as a career. I started treating my job as my life and mm -hmm. my career as my life because I realized there is no end. There is no yeah, they're blend. change. They are the, the, it's the same. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, Especially when you have like Snapchat and TikTok and Instagram. And that's what's. You, and you're promoting a music video. But like you're yeah. also on the side, like literally just being like, and this is what I ate for dinner. It's like, oh my that's God. That's what's interesting is there's not really a, a, a model or a mold of influencer and artist do you feel like i mean we are significantly we have a big age gap i'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm 32 you're 20 12 years that's yeah nothing. it's nothing crazy nah. no but i felt like when i was growing up my representation was pretty limited as far as yeah. queerness goes especially like i mean it's, i feel bad because i feel like ellen almost gets like a shit end of the stick because yeah. everyone's always like all I had was Ellen. I'm like, okay, well, she's awesome. She's but awesome. I just never wanted to dress or look like her, you know? Yeah. Do you feel like you had significantly more, like, representation at your age than... It's interesting because I think now it's more visible. Like, mm -hmm. I, I, I know now who is there. Mm -hmm. But I didn't really realize, I guess, how many people there were, how many LGBTQ people there were that I love now. But when I was... Straight, straight or before I was yeah, before yeah. I came out my best friend who ended up becoming my first girlfriend mm -hmm. 
she was the first person that I realized she was gay. And I asked her if she was gay, and she said no. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, right. Classic. Come talk to me in six months. She came out to me as bisexual six months later. And I was like, yeah, right. Come to me in six more months. Six more months, she became my girlfriend. And she was the first person for me that I was like, if I think it's okay for her to be gay, mm-hmm. it's okay for me to be gay. And then once I realized I had feelings for her, I was like, uh-oh. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. Um, <laughs> but I never cared if I was going to fall for a girl or a boy. I always said from the time I was little, I was like, whoever I fall for, great. But I yeah. didn't have anyone besides her at the time to look at and be like, oh, wow. Yeah. So you were pulling from like a real life inspiration from rather life. than exactly. looking at people online. But now that I've been more aware of online and more aware it's it's i mean the g's the fletchers they're so yeah you've been like introduced to a exactly. new audience or new people i'm like new if i would have known g before i came out yeah. like i would have been like oh that's that's, that's me that's yeah even if i would have known of g when i came out i would have dressed like this a whole hell of a lot sooner <laughs> do you think really that's so true i feel like it's so it's different because there's so many more queer people yeah. to look at that I feel like, at, if anything, maybe it just normalized being queer for you. That part. More than being like, I really look up to this one person. It's yeah. just like, oh, gay people exist. Gay people exist. And yeah. like, it's okay to experiment and be different and be out there and 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 be yourself. And I think for me, mm-hmm. I didn't know how I wanted to look. Yeah. I knew that I... For like public appearances and stuff, like I, if I'm performing, I like to look feminine. Mm-hmm. Like I, I don't like to look mask when I'm on stage. But if it's a music video or a day to day, like yeah. I, I like to feel like this. Or a TV show shoot, I like to feel like this. And I, I didn't know. I my mom does all my wardrobe, and oh, so yeah. I, I didn't know how to explain to her like how what I it was like, like wanting to look like. So then finally, when G came into my life, I was like, well, I wonder what G wears on carpets. Mm. And then I looked and I was like, that's this is what I've been trying to see. And so, like, I think for me, it was more just like, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally style. Also, you're 20. Yeah. So I feel like your style's going to change it's so many again, times. like more, so and, more many times. and more and more and so more. I mean, I went from the most feminine girl you would have ever met when I was 18. Yeah. Did you feel feminine in those outfits and stuff? Though? I hated it. I yeah. loved my costumes on Dancing yeah. with the Stars, but then after I went to like People's Choice, mm-hmm. wore this beautiful pink dress and like I guess I was just in that phase. Yeah. But I like I I mean I hated it. I was the girl that was running around the concrete barefoot and like made my mom hold the heels cuz I didn't even want to be seen holding them. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Hated it. No, I I'm the girl who was like a bridesmaid in a wedding and then at the end of the wedding during the reception I would go upstairs and change, change. into a different outfit. Absolutely. You know what like, I mean? And I figured that out at like 26, 27. Do yeah. you know what I mean for when I was 20, I was still wearing dresses. Yeah. I was going to date parties with boys and being yeah. like, yeah. And well, I did wear like sneakers with my dresses yep. to date parties. You have to. What the heck? I'm like, you that's a sign. Life. That's a sign that we should just take the dresses off. Yeah. But why do you think you're able to dress feminine then on stage, like performing? Do you I think don't it's like know. A I separation? Think, yeah, I think I like to feel cooler, mm-hmm. hotter. I don't, I don't know though what it I think it just makes me feel more like. I'm performing, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Because when I perform, I want to be Gaga, Freddie Mercury, Elton John, Miley Cyrus, those elaborate, it's extravagant, you yeah. know what I mean? But when I'm training, rehearsing, chilling, podcasting, TV showing, that's when I want to be G, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like yeah. That's- also, do you feel, I feel like you talk a lot about like JoJo versus Joel. I do, yeah. I do. Do you it's, feel like JoJo is the performer? For sure, yeah. for sure. I feel like when I'm on stage, it, it, it is a different human. Yeah. I tried to explain this to my best, best friend because she had never seen me on stage. And I was like, I can't explain it. I was like, when so- you'll see. Yeah. Like the seven minutes that we're out there, like it it will not be me. I don't know who it is. I don't know who takes over. But, but like, I feel like that's like a common phenomenon, I think, totally. for artists, right? It's also like, I feel like, you kind of almost have to do something like do. that to protect yourself. I think so. You know what I mean? It's you like, just kind of like black out almost. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And separate so that you can like protect who you really yep, are. For sure. But that must be complicated. And I obviously like watched your podcast and I've listened to things you've, you've talked about. But yeah. that must be yeah. difficult when you're dating. Very. Yeah. It's a very interesting conversation. And I think where I've actually messed up in the past is having the straight up conversation. Mm-hmm. 
and I try to bring it up at the beginning. There's two things that I try to bring up at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> and it's that and it's kids. And not the kid conversation like, hey, are you ready to have kids with me? I know it's a second date, but like, are you ready? More so just like, oh yeah, I want to have kids in the next three years. Like, I love kids. I can't that's wait to have three them. Three years? When you're 23? Oh yeah. Like that's Well, you're like, about to be 21, right? Yeah, this I'm month. To Congrats. But um, yeah. Like I've wanted When you're babies. 24, you want a baby. Oh yeah. A hundred percent. That's Even so sooner if I if I could like I do you think there's any chance that changes for sure yeah. I mean look never say never I've I always joke around I'm like I've planned three weddings I will never ever plan another one until there is a ring on my finger like, I think that's smart yeah I think that's like we smart. we have done a lot of things too premature for sure <laughs> um but now I'm in a better place and I the world doesn't believe it, but I'm a bit smarter than I was a couple of years ago. And I, but I, I, the one thing about me that has never, ever changed is my desire to have kids. I and it's that. been there since I was 12. Like yeah. I. Like a maternal instinct. So maternal. Yeah. Do and you want to carry a baby? I've gone back and forth. Okay. I really have. And I ultimately right now I'm at no. Okay. I don't. I want my egg. And then I got a, I got a good sperm donor lined up. And what, you and the sperm donor. Is it like a known sperm donor? Um, yeah. Like you know the person. I know the person. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not asking who it is. I'm just yeah. saying you know them. Because yeah. I think a lot of. Okay, wait. I'm also completely diverging from our conversation. I want to hear the other thing you say to people. So you ask them about <laughs> if oh, you yeah, want kids, baby. Yeah. yeah. And then I, I would normally bring up the whole like. So look, like I, I got to explain to you like this whole me publicly versus me privately. Yeah. And the conversation, I don't know if it scares people away or if it scares me away because it's mm. happened both ways before. And the problem with that conversation is it sounds like I am describing that I am one way in front of the camera and then another way behind it or yeah. one way on stage and then another off stage. But what I'm actually explaining is how I'm both at all times. Mm -hmm. And that's when people are like, this is like, I can't. It's confusing. It's confusing. Well, if you don't have any experience with it either. But because I feel like maybe for someone hearing that with no experience dating an artist or being around an artist, you might think like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Like, you exactly. know what I mean? Like a full like split personality. Exactly. When like, in reality, it's just like there are elements of yeah. both parts of your personality exactly. that probably are emphasized when you're doing one thing or the other. Exactly. And then what happens is whenever somebody says this, this to me, they're meaning it in a nice way. Like I've had girls, specifically girl that I was very, very close to. And this broke my heart when she told me this because she meant it so genuinely. And I was like, oh, you know nothing then. Mm is well I'm not in love with that I'm in love with this mm -hmm. and I was like oh <laughs> <laughs> but meaning that they don't love me publicly yeah. they love me privately and they did mean it like I I love all of you yeah but it but, like your your career doesn't affect the way that I love you but then I was like I made them very much so clarify what they meant before I took it to heart and they literally meant like I don't love you when you are mm -hmm. public Jojo Siwa I love you when you're private Jojo Siwa and I was like oh that's not never gonna work yeah because then it's the conversation of well I I don't want my kids to be in the public eye mm -hmm. and I'm like well that sucks because yeah, even like, if I don't either, even if you don't post anything about your kids like there. yeah it you, almost makes it worse if like, you have like paparazzi following you yeah. you're already, and I don't want to exploit my kids that's never going to be my but I'm so public that they will I'm not going to not take them to target with me you yeah, know yeah, what I yeah. mean and so it's I've had to have like those type of realizations of like when I was little I was friends with this YouTuber family mm -hmm. and they vlogged every day of their life and very known YouTuber family and they, I asked them, I said, how do you vlog without getting embarrassed around people? Because like, it's... I find it so, I can't so do it. And they said, if you know us and you're hanging out with us, you know that you're going to be on our vlog. Mm. If you are willingly to hang out with us, yeah. you know that you're going you to be on our vlog. And that just is what it is. We're not using you. We just film our daily life. And I sort of, after I had the last Joel Jojo conversation with the last girl that I talked to before where I'm at now... I I was like, I don't want to have this conversation again. Mm -hmm. I was like, because it does just need to be like, you just know if you know, and if you don't, you don't. And if yeah. you get it, you get it. And if you don't, you don't. And that's also okay. And I'm in a great place now. Well, the positive thing is there are people who will understand that because I know from yeah. experience, obviously I dated someone who... You did? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you know, like there there is like a separation of like 
even she's talked about it, I think, and stuff. I think we talked about it on my podcast. So I just can't remember. But there's like Carrie and there's Fletcher or yeah. like my roommate is Zolita and there's Zolita and there's Zoe, you know, yeah. but they are the same person. But there are like bigger characteristics and stuff. I think yeah. I feel like people would maybe get themselves like in a slippery slope dating you by yeah. thinking it's like an on I think some switch. people I think some people feel special when they get to know a side of you that other people don't get to know. Yes. So I feel like maybe someone would say to you like, oh, I'm in love with Joel, but that's because you're the only one who knows them, do you know? So yeah. they like feel special because exactly. of that. Exactly. But you're like, but I'm both people. But you get both. Yeah. yeah. And both. As long as I love both. Yeah. <laughs> and also I think that it's a testament to the fact that you're proud of who you are so you're like i'm proud of who jojo is and yeah. who i am at my house yeah. so like for you to only love one of those people means they, you're not proud of me the both, way i'm proud of myself yeah. and they both need each other like yeah. when i am on stage even though i am this jojo it's the joelle that puts in the work yeah. for it. it's the joelle that is like go harder go more full out like why aren't you fucking singing like move your mouth a little bit come on get some vocals out like totally. it does, i don't care if you're hot and tired like <laughs> come on kid find it yeah and then when i'm at home laying in bed doing nothing and being a lazy pile it's jojo that's like hey bitch if you're gonna perform in two days you better get up and start practicing mm -hmm, you know what i mm -hmm. mean and then joelle is like let's go like, <laughs> yeah, no but it's real but yeah. it's also They're i think those present. people I think like as time goes on too, people have a tendency either to lean into one or the other yes, or like you'll meld together completely exactly. at some point. Yeah. But I'll be curious to see what happens. Yeah. I mean, you're literally 20. I'm li it's, it's so weird. Like, it's so weird. I think about the artists that I love and idolize and I'm like, damn, they really hit their big break at 26, 27, 28. Yeah. And I'm like, fuck, I got a long way to go. <laughs> yeah, you're so young. Do you feel, are you, do you have any fears around like, you know, the classic like child star tropes and stuff. <laughs> like you're turning 21. Are you on drugs yeah, and going like, crazy? I mean, do you think about that? Luckily, I'm terrified of my mother. Okay. And she's the best human in the world. My yeah. mom is genuinely the greatest human. But I know if I ever did something stupid, she would not have it with me. Um, I think... The, or like, how do you keep yourself from having it? Just having a legit breakdown. Yeah. I honestly accredit it to the people around me. I've mm. always surrounded myself with people older than me. When I was 13, my best friends were 22. When I was, now that I'm 20, my best friends are 30. Like yeah. that's, that is my friend group. And I think that the best thing for me is I only surround myself because I have a very addictive personality mm -hmm. i have a very loyal personality and so i know that if i get into something i'm gonna stay into it yeah. it's gonna get bad so <laughs> yeah. i know that i can't even start it but i i just met this friend and we've gotten very very close and i i told her i was like damn i'm so happy that i met you out of your party phase because if we met in your party phase we would have never been a thing yeah like, we would have never been able to be friends because mm -hmm. i wouldn't you can't be around that i couldn't like be that. around that yeah. even as a friend and I've had to have conversations with friends where I'm like, hey, we're so close. I love you, but we can't be this close right now because of what you're doing. Wow. I know myself if I'm around it and I don't. And so that's why I choose to make my best friends like my older people. Yeah. Do people ever think like that's like a red flag that your friends are so much older or like people do and it's it actually blows my mind and i've gotten a lot of shit for social media and so have they uh, like literally one of my best friends in the entire world is a 30 year old straight man mm -hmm. and public figure we met on special forces tyler cameron mm -hmm. and i fucking love this guy with my whole entire heart what is a 20 year old gay jojo siwa doing being best friends with Tyler Cameron. Yeah. Why are you guys? That's weird. Yeah. Okay. Like, I, yeah, get, I know. Okay. Like, it's I, like, what do you say exactly? Yeah. But I think that's like an industry situation also that, and it's just like it, you bond with who you bond with. And Fair. like, I, even, even when I was a kid and my best friends were way older than me, it wasn't like I had, here's okay. 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 Here's, here's what I would say. If I had all 21 year old friends right now mm -hmm. and one 30 year old that would be weird yeah or if when i was 13 i had all 14 year old friends and 12 year old friends but then one 26 year old that would be weird but because right now my best friends are tyler's 30 rachel's 32 um i i do have a 21 and a 23 and a 24 so i got there a couple my go. age but my closest people are there's another one that's 35. 
Jen, I think, is 33. Like, that's... Yeah, that's you're that's, skewing much older. I'm skewing much older, and it's all of my friends. Yeah. You know what I mean? But can you imagine right now at 20 being friends with, like, a 12-year-old or, like, a 14-year-old? No, <laughs> but if... I'm just curious. I'm like, no, yeah, it's, it's very strange. It's one of those things that's like, you just had to be there. Mm -hmm. Cause no. Yeah. But me as a 12 year old was different. It was, and I think it was because I was working as a 25 year old mentally. I was, well, you can't help but be around so many adults also when you are fully in an industry where you're like being followed by cameras, et cetera. Like those people are going to be older. 17 year old. And I'm like, you're a fetus. Yeah. Like, but you are a fetus. I am. So (laughs) whenever I tell my friends, my friends that are like 24, I'm like, you're so young. You have so like, you're so young. I'm like, I'm four years younger. younger. Like to you, I am 16. Like to me, that's now. (laughs) Yeah. You're a baby. I just feel like I don't know. I feel like you should give yourself grace to also remember that you're 22. Yeah. Like, I feel like it's probably hard when everyone is kind of being like, grow up, Jojo, all the yeah. time. I'm like, why? Yeah. You're literally on top of the world and you're 20 Thank years you. old and you have Thank all the time in the world to do so much Whatever. other stuff. I, I try, man. I try. I try to give myself a little grace being like, you're literally a baby. It's you okay. are a baby and you're like a very successful baby. Thank you. It's crazy. It's Thank so you. fun to watch. Thank you. Do you talk about dating? Yeah. Like, do you tell the internet if you are? I mean, I know you've obviously had public relationships. I've had very public relationships, and I will never. Never again? <laughs> never. Well, all right. Look, never again is crazy, but I. I mean, it goes back to you, like, having kids. Like, you can't keep. There's nothing you can really keep that private forever. There's nothing that I can keep hidden. Yeah. And so I think my new mentality is private, not secret. Yeah. You know I what like I mean? Too. And honestly, it's out of protection for the other human. You yeah. know, I fell for somebody. And this somebody straight up told me I could never be with you because of your public life. Really? I would want to be with you, but I cannot because of your lifestyle. And that was really hard for me because I was like, I can't change that. Yeah. Like that's saying you're too tall for me, but I am in love with you, yeah. but you're too tall you're for like, me. And I'm I was not like, gonna cut myself off at the knees. Yeah. And that would literally be what you're doing if you were to sacrifice your career, which exactly. is exactly and like built. I just even if I was like, you know what, fuck it, I'll stop my career tomorrow, I'd still go out and people would still know who I am. Yeah. Like there's no changing that. And so I, I fought for a while and I was like, give it a chance, give it a chance. Like, just try. Like, you don't know what yeah. it's actually like. And they were like, I, I can't. Like, I, it's hard enough for me being your friend. I cannot imagine being your girlfriend. And I was like, oof. That's tough. It was a hard, hard pill to swallow. But then I realized it kind of made me realize that, wait, this career is my public career, not my relationship's public career, whoever yeah, yeah, yeah. that may be with one day. And so it kind of got me in the headspace of like, let's, let's keep this under wraps. Mm -hmm. And I just, I don't know. It's kind of like the same thing as my kids. Like you're going to be out there. You're going to come to target with me, but like, I ain't going to pose it. I ain't going to exploit it. Totally. But isn't it, uh, isn't it so sad when you're like in a relationship and it's like cute and you want to share posts with like pictures because you're like, we are so cute. The hardest thing ever. Yeah. I've been there. And yeah, it's, it is the hardest thing ever. And even like wanting to share to, to your close friends mm-hmm. and you still can't do that sometimes. Like yeah. it, it is so, so tough because it, it is cute. It's and like, so cute. And it's also representation. That's what I always struggle with, like going back yep. and forth all the time. Cause I'm like, God, if I could have just seen this couple when I was little, I would have like changed my whole life, yep. you know? Yeah. But also it's, I think it's hard cause it feels, I don't know if you feel this way, but for me, when I am dating someone and I'm not posting about it or like sharing it at all, yeah. it feels like a huge filter over like my whole life, life. you know, because yeah. I feel like relationships become such a big part of your life. So if, they you're, do. if you're posting 40 Snapchats a day and avoiding posting someone it's in tough. it, it really feels like a huge I'm filter. I'm something. Yeah. yeah. And it's like even doing a photo dump, half the photos are taken by that human. Yeah. And it's like, oh, I just wish I could put their hand in it. Like yeah. it's. Yeah, no, it's, it's tough. It's so tough. Um, but that's the sacrifice. You yeah, know what I no, mean? It's so true. The hardest sacrifice, but it's, I've learned worth it. Yeah. Oh my God. And for I'm sure. proud. I've kept a lot private from the internet. Like I, which is crazy because you post a lot so and much. like with your podcast too. So much. I could not believe when you said on Caller Daddy that you used to post 10 YouTube videos a week. 10 a week, seven on my vlog, three on my main. And That's I was crazy. Filming. How old were you? I, at that time, it would have been from when I was 13 to 15. Did you go to school? So I was homeschooled. Uh-huh. And then I graduated when I was 15. 
Yeah. Like, what? Psycho. And you graduated when you were 15 and from 13 to 15, you were posting 10 YouTube videos a day. Nuts. When were you studying? I, I'm naturally really book smart. Um, and so for me, honestly, my school legally on set, I would have to do three hours of school a day. Mm-hmm. And so I had my program Monarch. We love you, Monarch. It was a great school program. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I mean, I would go on and in three hours I could do a week, a week and a half of school. Cause I would not read anything. I would just go straight to the questions and answer them and answer them. even math. I mean, I'd be in algebra and like, I wouldn't need to learn how to do it. I would be able to figure out the answer. You know what What's I mean? What's going on with your brain? Cut me open and I, examine it. We please. need to study like, you. Like something I is would love going to on. <laughs> something is going on. Okay. I also love that you said in that interview that you were like the one thing what that people wouldn't expect is that you are making decisions on your own basically yeah. right like do you have a team of people obviously i know because you're signed to columbia <laughs> yes yes columbia is my label yeah um i do i have my i have my label i have my agent but honestly the team my mom and i is the team it's the we, team yeah. yeah we decide everything i decide everything and then she makes it happen but we have this joke Came up with it in the last week. I was like, we we are the team. No one else is the team, Mom. You and I are the team. And I was like, we're like a baseball team. You're the pitcher, and I'm the catcher. That's all you need. And she was like, yeah, because like I throw it, and then you run to the outfield really fast, and then throw it back to me at home plate. I was like, no, 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 no. It's like, because you're such a good pitcher, no one can hit your balls. Oh, my God. We just strike them out. Boom. And then when we get up to bat, we don't need base runners because we hit home runs every time. It's like we are literally a team of two. That is crazy, and it seems like it is true. I mean, look. If it didn't work, we would not be this. No, boring. obviously. <laughs> Something we're doing is yeah. working. But does that, do you have a complicated relationship then with your mom as like a mom compared yes. to a business partner? Very much so. Our relationship just is what it is. Mm-hmm. And I've had a lot of people come into my life and be like, yo, your relationship with your mom is not normal. normal. Like, that's not okay. And I'd be like, yo, <laughs> you just got to go with it because it, it's it's not normal same way my schooling life wasn't normal yeah. same way my life isn't normal I was like but it is our normal it is our totally like and you just gotta get with it and I my my best friend for the last the one that was 20 26 or 27 when mm-hmm. I was 12 um went through a phase where she was like are you and your mom healthy and I was like yeah I think so and she was like mm, I don't think you are <laughs> and I was like mm, maybe you're right like and I like kind of went into it but now she's been my friend long enough to know like yo your your mom is the best thing for you. Like she yeah. genuinely, I could not do it without her. I tell her all the time. I'm like, the day you die is the day I disappear from the face of the planet of Earth. Like oh I will God. go live in the and middle of Texas, like- raise little Freddie, Eddie, and Teddy, and <laughs> like literally no one will hear from me again because I yeah. couldn't do it without like, her. Without her, you don't want to do it. Nope, That's- couldn't and don't want to. Well, like who's to say what is normal anyway? At the at end of this the day. point. <laughs> And also, I don't think anything about your life is giving that normal. You don't think? No, no, not really. You don't think I'm normal? (laughs) No, I do think you're actually really normal. Thank you. You're so sweet. But do you think, okay, did your mom care when you were going to come out? No, she actually, she made it super easy for me. Um, She said she kind of knew. Yeah. She was like, I have known since you were like 13. And I was like, no. And she was like, you never liked boys. You never were into it. Everyone had crushes and you like made up one to have one. And I was like, okay, valid. Um, but then, yeah, when I, when I came out to her, it was my first night after kissing a girl. Okay. Like, oh God, how do I tell my family? Like now I'm in love with my best friend. Like, this is weird. Like, what do I do? And yeah, I said goodbye to that girl cause she was going to drive home and I was going to fly home. And I go back into the car to drive to the airport with my mom. And she literally was like, you really like her, don't you? And I'm sobbing. And she was like, I was like, yeah. And my mom was like, do you like her as a friend or as more than a friend? And I was Aww. just like. Time to shine more than a friend. <laughs> and time to shine. Time to shine. <laughs> like, here we go. And yeah, that's when I came out to my mom. And she was like, yeah, I figured. And my dad was like, sick, no pregnancy scares. Because they know how yeah. bad I want kids. And at this point, I was 17. And so I was, you know, yeah, old enough to the point where if I wanted to, I could have had children I mean, with a boy. You yeah. know what I mean? And it would have been very straight of me. Very, um, very straight of you. So my dad was like, no pregnancy scares. Um well, that's yeah. awesome. It seems like it was very casual then. It was. Yeah. They were really good about it. We went through the typical month, two month period where it was like a little awkward then at home. Yeah. And I was grateful because my mom brought it up to me. She was like, hey, <laughs> we got to talk. And I was like, ah, shit, she's mad at me. This is awkward. She's got to tell grandparents like crap. Yeah. Right? And she was like, 
I know I've been weird. I know I haven't been talking to you like I normally do. She's like, but I just don't know if you're comfortable, if you mm. want me to talk about it, how I talk about it. She's like, I've never had a gay kid before. I don't know what to do. Yeah. I've never had a friend that has a gay kid. I don't know who to talk to, who to ask, how to treat you. Like, totally. And I was like, mom, nothing's changed. I was like, same way you asked me about Mark, one of my boyfriends back mm -hmm. in the day. It's like, same way you asked me about Mark. I was like, you can ask me about her. Yeah. And I was, she was like, oh, okay. Like, it was just like a little learning period. Totally. I always say to people when they come out to their parents that like, Think about how long it took you to process that information for yourself and like give your parents some grace, that grace in yeah. that time too. Just because it is, it can be, if you have like an expectation of what your kid's life will be and then it changes, it's like overnight. It's then, just a little different. Yeah, it takes and time. And different doesn't mean necessarily bad. No, not bad at all. If anything, great. Yep. We love being gay. We do. But yeah, no, it's just, it takes time to process. For sure. That's so nice. But I would think that it would be complicated too with the business side of stuff. Yeah. So then it was like, okay, what are we going to do? <laughs> I feel bad that you're like squished in the bed. No, I'm actually so <laughs> okay. cozy. Okay, good. I hurt my leg on last music video. And so it's just acting up, which is why I keep squiggling because it's so just sorry. Is like, ah, I'm locked right now. Why aren't you moving me? I'm so but sorry. no, I genuinely am like, chilling right okay, now good um promise promise then it came the conversation of like what do i do for the world and i was like yeah we'll just kind of get there as we figure it out yeah. and then um swimming with these people called pride house and they made a video with me to the song ain't it fun ain't it fun ain't i it remember night? that yeah yeah and so they posted that and I had known them for years since I was like eight. I've known them and I, I wanted to tell them because they were gay and yeah, I was gay. Yeah. And I thought it was the coolest thing ever to tell someone yeah, gay duh. that you're gay. You know what I mean? And I was so excited to tell them and they never really asked and I never really had an opportunity to tell them. So I did it. Right. Mm -hmm. But we made that video and then they posted it and it got all the, oh my God, is this Jojo coming out? And like, I was in a closet made of glass. Like it was pretty fucking obvious that I was gay, but you know, to the straight eye, maybe not. Right? Yeah, I feel like I feel like to gay people, I think a lot of gay people saw the queer flagging that you were doing. But sure. I feel like straight people well, like, and whoa. middle America and yeah. like, you know, the kids wearing the bows and stuff. It was like, oh, what's this? Yeah, yeah. way more of a shock. Um, so after that got what's called, I mean, at the time, backlash, which is crazy that that's considered yeah. backlash. Um, the Pride House reached out to me and they were like, hey, like, we're going to delete the video. We're so sorry that you're getting heat like this. And I was like, whoa, 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 no, 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 no. I was like, it's OK. I was trying to figure out how to tell you guys that I was gay, actually. I was like, I am gay. I was like, but I just didn't know how to tell you. It's so, like, I just now got to figure out what I'm going to do about this. Mm -hmm. And if I want to confirm, deny, like, I don't know. It's like, but I'll figure it out. And then I was like, you know what? I'm going to post a video of me singing Born This Way. So that was Dead. that was my like trying to come out. Yeah, like, I was like trying to make it obvious. But it it's still, still wasn't obvious going enough. over people's heads. Still wasn't obvious enough. So then I to tell my close friends I'd posted the picture of the best gay cousin ever shirt. Mm -hmm. I'd post that on my close friend's story. And all my friends were on it and they were stoked and whatever, fine. And then one night at like three in the morning, I was on FaceTime with my girlfriend and I was like, this was maybe like two weeks after. I was like, I want to post this on my real story. And she was like, do it. And I was like, okay. Boop, fell asleep, woke up, my life was changed. Holy shit. How are you so impulsive? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I honestly, I think I just realized there was no changing it. And people also have to remember that I've never played a character. Mm -hmm. I've done a few one-offs here and there playing a character, but I've, I've made a career out of just being myself. Yeah, and totally. so I knew that this was a piece of my life. This is who I am. There ain't no change in it. I don't want to change it. I'm happy. I'm in love. You know what I mean? Yeah, we love of course. puppy love. Puppy yeah. love is the best thing ever. And also your first love too. First love, no. best friend is so cute. Like it just was what it was. And yeah, I I just remember being like, if it if someone doesn't like it, fine. Yeah. And a lot of people didn't like it. I can imagine. Yeah, and that was hard. And I worked for Nickelodeon at the time. Mm -hmm. And the company was not very happy with me. The president was like, so what are we supposed to tell kids now? And I was like, nothing. That I'm fucking girls. No, <laughs> we're just going to tell them that literally, I'm happy. Like, Literally what? I, and I think I credit people assuming being gay is bad or gross to the word sexuality because yeah immediately you think sex it's like become sexual yeah immediately you think sex it's in the word but at the time 
being 17. Yeah, you're a kid. You're a kid. I'm not thinking like, oh man, I can't wait to rail a girl one day. <laughs> oh, literally. It's like, oh my God, I you're think this girl so hot. Like, yeah. yeah, it's it's no different than Cinderella and Prince Charming. It's like, literally no different than if you had your first boyfriend. It's no exactly. different. Exactly. But yeah, it no does get sexualized. what Cinderella is thinking about Prince Charming, yeah. right? I'm no. Sure, Cinderella and Prince Charming are adults. I'm sure we know what they do when the castle closes, yeah. right? But uh, for sure. yeah, no one yeah. thinks about that. You know what I mean? And so I think me coming out, I look at 17 year olds now and 17 year old child stars now. And I'm like, wow, that's where I was when I came out. And it, I'm not much older now. I'm three years older than I was then, but I'm like, damn, like I really, that was so brave. I did something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You really did. I really did my big one. And it, no, you should be so proud of yourself. I think that that was, and the way you went about it, it seems like I don't know. I think if there's one obviously really positive quality about you, it's that you don't have shame or like, and I think some people use that to make fun of you, like the SNL skit and stuff. But I think when it comes to your queerness, that's like the coolest thing ever that you have no shame about that. And then you like figured it out and then you're like, okay, I'm going to tell people. Yeah. And like, yeah, you could have, it could have gone so differently if you had carried more shame about who you are. Totally. I think one of the things that I've realized most about my career is 2% of my life is public, realistically, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so people only know what I show them. Yeah. And so if I, if I, if I show people the shameless, the positive, the confident, that's what they take from me and that's what they gain from me. Mm -hmm. If I show them me having a fucking breakdown over my body, like no one, like that's, that's not what the world wants. You know what I mean? And so I've learned that even though I behind closed doors might think one way about myself, feel one way about something that whatever I show the world, that's going to inspire them to feel one way. You Mm -hmm. know what I mean? It's the same way Lady Gaga says, I'm on the right track. Maybe I was born to survive. Like, Man, I hear those lyrics, and that's in a three-minute song, but I hear that song, and I'm like, my mama told me I was a superstar when I was young. You know what I mean? Like, (laughs) you take those lyrics. this song about you? Literally, (laughs) right? But I'm sure Gaga has her days where she doesn't feel like a superstar. Oh, 100%. 100%. We don't see that. You see Gaga, and if you think of her, you feel like the most powerful figure, right? Totally. And I think that I've learned that I can do that for others. Well, that's like the influence you want to have too, you know? Exactly. To but make I, feel I, good. I fully think that if you ever were to like post something about feeling bad about yourself or a breakdown or anything like that, you would also. Oh, also, I did. I got so made fun of. <laughs> really? Oh my God. But I feel like, I feel like people would be really receptive to that. Some people, obviously there's yeah. always going to be people who aren't, but I think like that is the thing that's so refreshing about celebrities in 2024 is, is that just... we are fully actualized people. Like you are a fully real person yeah. with dimension and you don't have to be perfect all the time yeah, for and sure. like it is so empowering for it's empowering for a 12 year old to see a person being queer and not ashamed at all but there's also yeah. like an element of it's okay. i think it's okay i think it's good when i share times where i feel like in my still inter- like internalized homophobia for myself of you know course. just because it's like yeah the, these That's things are all thing. normal yeah That's, you you just want to feel normal yeah totally Everyone's feel- normal and the funny thing is there's no such thing no at all but i also feel like the internet hasn't really been that kind to you in creating a space that would make you feel comfortable being vulnerable like that it's interesting it's no matter what i do no matter what i say i was laughing about this today i was like damn the way that i ordered my starbucks got hated i literally am in the drive-thru and it's a video of me on snapchat being like hi there could i please get a uh brown sugar and people will stitch it be like hi there yeah it's like you can't win I can't win. I had a speech impediment when I was probably nine to 15 is probably when it like kind of fixed itself, even maybe 16. I was a little old, but fine. Like, yeah. No. And they still on SNL. I know. Do my impression with that impediment. You know what I mean? Which is. Which I kind of thought was kind of fucked up. You know, it was, but it was fine. Yeah. Is it? I've learned that I can take it. Yeah. And I came up with this fucked up way for me to feel good about being bullied. And it just, it works. And so I, I keep it in my back pocket. But I say that like, look, and this isn't to SNL. This is just to general. If Susie is bullying Emily at mm. school, mm-hmm. right? I don't know if Emily can handle it. But now all of a sudden Susie is like, dream guest on my podcast. I'm Jojo Sewa. 
and Susie starts making fun of me on social media, she's not going to bully em- Emily anymore because it's not fun anymore for her to bully Emily. And so I know that I can take it. Mm-hmm. I know Susie can bully me as much as she wants and I'm going to be fine, but I don't know if Emily would be fine. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so it's in a weird way. I'm like, ah, I'm saving Emily's life. You know what I mean? Well, that's admirable for you of you to be a <laughs> punching bag for all I'll take it, man. everyone everywhere. I, but also I hope you know you also don't deserve that. Thank you. I've got good people around me. Yeah, and for like sure. hearing that from people like you. Yeah. Hearing that from people like G, hearing that from people like Tyler, like having real legit people in the industry be honest with me always gives me the little bit of cuz everyone needs reassurance. Yeah, 100%, while, including me. And so it does give me the little bit of reassurance that it's like I, I don't know how you thought of me before I came in here, but I know we have a really good mutual friend. And so I was like, yeah, she's probably got to feel decently about me. Oh my me, God, right? I like, feel great about you. You probably got to have like a little bit of like, oh, she's not this fucking lunatic, right? No. But it's like now you've gotten to talk to me for an hour. And so now I know like you can kind of see through my holes. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. And it's like, there's there's normal in me. Yeah, of course. Also, if people want to see it, they'll see it. If yeah. people... People, some people are committed to misunderstanding you. Totally. And that will always be the case. And I am down. Like, I am yeah. here to entertain. If yeah, that is yeah, how yeah. you're entertained, be my guest. I know. I'm like, I admire you so much. I don't know that yeah, I could handle everything that you go through. Also, <sighs> I want to say, I feel like it's interesting because I feel like the internet as a whole has not always been so kind to you. Yeah. I think the thing that's been most disappointing to me with the internet is watching the queer community not be that kind to you. Yeah. And like really dogging on you for things that I would I would love to see every queer person's like outfits that they were wearing at their peak of trying to figure out what they yeah. want to wear. Do you know what I mean? I, I know what I was wearing. Like my favorite is when people started to come at me for dressing like G. Yeah. And I was like. That's what we all do. By the way, that's what we all do. That's what we all do. I wanted, I was dressing like Kristen Stewart. I was looking up what she was wearing, dressing like her. And you look like that. And straight people do that. Gay people do that. It's so normal. And gay people, we have to do it almost more because we have so little, like, what do what, what do we wear to look cool? Like right. you don't you have to search and figure you it out. Figure it out. And, you and also go fucking and awesome of you to be like so transparently like I look up to G Flip. I want to dress like G Flip. The first time I got that comment, I literally was like, oh, people notice. <laughs> yes, <laughs> like no, I was like, goal achieved, baby. I did it. I like, know that's good. I was I so feel like... proud. I was so proud. I was like, I did it. I did it. You I did. look like them. I did it. That's so cute. That's the thing. It's like. <laughs> I just wish people would watch your journey and yeah. find all the ways that's, that it's endearing yeah. rather than trying to poke every hole that they can. Yeah. And every like you are like a punching bag that yep. and I'm sure, honestly, I some of that's probably people's own internalized homophobia. Yeah. You know what I mean? I um I'm really lucky. I have a guy around me. He's my choreographer and creative director. And his name is Richie Jackson. Mm-hmm. And this man is the I mean, best human in the world. Most brilliant human. I credit so much to him and my my life would be very different without him. He has been with Lady Gaga as her choreographer and creative director for the last decade and a half. Mm -hmm. And so he was with her through all of the phases, Mm -hmm. through the that's a girl with a dick phase, through the what do they call her, a hermaphrodite. Like like they attacked Gaga, the world, the queer community did. And she... Obviously, I mean, any anybody can see, like, any human would struggle a little bit with that, mm-hmm. right? But the stories that he's told me and the things that they've talked about together, he all the time is like, I've never seen history repeat itself like this. Like, he's, wow. And that gives me, like, just, again, that little bit of reassurance that mm-hmm. I'm like, Gaga went through this shit. MJ went through this shit. Like, if that's what it takes, maybe I am in. You know what I mean? Totally. I mean, you will come out the other side it's, at the end of the day. We were sprinting. Yeah. We were in a marathon sprint. But I am disappointed. I just wish that queer people would give you more grace. Yeah. And like, I think. Thank you. Also, like, obviously, sometimes we misspeak or we say something like a little bit wrong, but we all do. And it's like, I just feel like you get so little grace. I mean, literally no matter what I say or do. Yeah. And, So my mom told me the other day, I was deciding if I should do one thing or another thing. And I was like, well, if I do, I was, I was actually, I was deciding if I wanted, I'll be, I'll be open about it because I don't really care that much. 
if I wanted to sing live or if I wanted to lip sync. Mm -hmm. And I was just deciding, I was like, how am I going to put on a better show? What's going to keep my body healthier? I was telling you earlier, I have tonsils. tonsil problems right now. And I was like, what's, what's better, right? Mm -hmm. And my mom was like, Jojo, if you sing live, people are going to say you sound like shit. If you sing lip syncing, people are going to say you're lip syncing and you're not a real singer. She's yep. like, either way, you're going to get shit. She's yeah, like, you so pick your shit. You know what I mean? She's so true. And I think that, like, honestly helped me with a lot more than just that choice. It helped me be like, hmm, what do I want to wear today? Well, if I wear this, people are going to say that. If I wear this, people are going to say that. Okay, I'll just wear this. Like, That's so true. Yeah. That's so true. But do you also feel loved, like, online? I do. do you I, feel like you have, like, a community of people who really, like, support and lift you up? I... I have the exact career that I wanted, mm -hmm. whether people like it or not. My analytics show how many people watch my things from the For You page and how many people search my name, click on my page and watch my video. Fuck yeah. And to get people to do that is impossible. And and I definitely, I definitely feel love, but from the people around me. Yeah. They keep me happy. They keep me positive. And they keep me pushing. And my, like I said before, my my job on this earth is to entertain. And people are entertained. People are definitely I'm doing entertained. My job. People are definitely entertained. And it's just getting started. Oh my God, we did these two new music videos. And I haven't seen a cut yet. I'm supposed to get a cut of one of them today. But watching just like the little bits of playback. Yeah. And then going back and watching Karma. Mm-hmm. Karma sucks. No way. It is so bad compared to the new two. Really? I couldn't even watch it. It was like painful to watch. And I, I mean, Karma was my baby. Karma is yeah. my baby. I was so proud of this video. So proud of these photos. So proud of these looks. Yeah. Now I look at it and I'm like, that's what I thought was good. <laughs> like that's. Because your standards are already. I mean, the new stuff is just like blown Karma out of the water. And so now I'm like, I don't care what people say about Karma. I got this new shit to look at. Like. Okay, well, I thought Karma was amazing, and I watched Thank it right you. up, and I was like, fuck yeah, this is awesome. Thank you. Uh, was that scary to do, like, the girl-on-girl, -girl, like, scene kind of thing? I, okay, <laughs> yeah, yes and no. It definitely, I needed to be with someone that I trusted. Yeah. For sure, especially for that first, because um, I, you know, had never... And really, you never had, like, a female co-star, right? No, so, yeah. and, like, never even just been that... Raunchy. Raunchy is a great <laughs> word. Raunchy. Raunchy publicly. And so I was like, here we go. Like, good luck. And I've, luckily in the Karma video, I had a girl that I was very, felt very safe with and she felt very safe with. And I mean, we laughed and we giggled. And uh, the other girl in Karma who plays my girlfriend, her name is Malia. And she, she's one of my like best friends in the whole wide okay, world. Cool. So just and a safe environment in I general. keep it really safe. Yeah. And I, I keep it very comfortable for everybody, especially when we're learning it. Because mm -hmm. it's. You know, it's a lot. You're on top of each other. You're grinding. You're licking. You're touching. Like, there's a lot happening. The lick. Okay. The lick the is lick was crazy. Unintentional. What? So, so me and Malia have been best friends. That's Malia. We've been best it. friends for a few years now. And we have this like running joke that she's in love with me. And it's like, it's a joke, but it's not really a joke, <laughs> but it's a joke. And like, yeah. we like poke at it. So she's, we're doing the tight shot and we just ran the whole song, me singing straight to her face. And the whole time, I mean, we're dying laughing and Richie's there like, kiss her neck, lick her, get closer, whisper in her ear, troops. Like that's Richie's job, right? I'm dead, yeah. All of a sudden I get the edit of the video and we see her lick my neck yeah neither of us remember you, it you don't remember Richie it happening. doesn't remember it we can't find it in playback like no one remembers the neck lick but it's one of the most it's, iconic moments it's there but i will say we were watching karma back and she's in the new music videos as well and so we were watching karma back and we were like damn we thought that lick neck was something neck lick was something like we really thought we yeah did it. you did it is, is it, it lick neck lick neck <laughs> that neck lick neck lick. It, it sounds like a crazy thing to say in general so are the next ones are they also f like very adult feeling or very very more so very is there dancing very yeah, yeah. okay I, I I wanted, it was hard to figure out how am I going to get people to keep talking. Yeah. Right? I was like, fuck, we really went there with karma. We got people talking. Now how are we going to keep, keep them talking? talking? And I I had a vision for what song I wanted to come next. And my label had a different vision. And I was like, all right, got to pick what hill I want to die on here. Mm -hmm. And so I ended up going with their idea for the second song. And then we went to mine for the third because it'll be a little bit bigger of a look. And I genuinely was like, all right, how am I going to make this second song 
Yeah. How am I going to make the second song big? And actually, I mean, I'll just show you. I have this. I literally have one photo on my phone from it. But I mean, it is gnarly. That's me down there with that contraption Shut on my head. Shut the hell up. Is that, a- that POV. That's sick. That's just one, one tiny little, like, I mean, it's great. It's Are people going to be talking? For sure. For sure. For sure. People will be talking, especially with number three. Number three is, I put all my eggs in one basket with number three. I really, really did. And um, you're going to get to see me in some girl, girl. You're going to get to see me in some boy. Oh, yeah. It was the closest I've ever been to a boy. Oh, my God. Um, you're gonna get to see it. You're gonna, we're gonna go on a journey. That's, I can't wait to see it. It's gnarly. Do you identify as like a lesbian or? Yeah, I mean, I, I know I've seen a video of you saying you don't like the word lesbian. Fuck me. That was like the start of me getting hated on for everything. Oh I my do. God. Every, a lot of people have said that before. A lot by of people the way. have said that. And also, Here's the thing for me. Lesbian is just a mouthful. It's a, it's definitely a word. It is better for me to just say I'm gay. Yeah, like, I mean, also, no one gets to tell you how you are and are not allowed to identify. All I, I said one day is I didn't like the word. I that know. is it. I, and fuck me. Apparently, I hate all lesbians. I'm like, okay, so I hate myself. No, then. yeah. No, not the point. Uh, also, that is such a common, like, that is a common thing and, like, part of a lot of lesbians' journeys. Totally. Is not liking the word. Because totally. also, that word for so many people is used, like, negatively. Exactly. And against you. Exactly. So, I mean... I, I try to make it a big deal to like always say I'm a lesbian and talk and use yeah. the word because I'm like, okay, if we all are just hearing it more casually, it'll just be chill. Maybe it'll get better. But yeah, like I don't think that I think that that goes back to the same idea of like, I just wish people would give you more grace. Like a little more grace. Just give you grace. And also, you can give someone like the information without being like, and you hate lesbians, exactly. by the way. And I've never, I literally love lesbians. Like, I'm literally in love with lesbians. Like, that is, <laughs> that's the whole thing. I am lesbian who loves lesbian. Like, I am <laughs> trust everybody. We're taking the word back, okay? Oh, gosh. But no, I, Honestly, it's one of the only like things that I've had to like set the record straight for on the internet because like I did say it. Yeah, you just don't want people like, to like get I it misconstrued. Yeah, um, no, I, I definitely identify as a lesbian. I pff, no shame. I just somebody asked me like, "What are you?" I'm like, oh, "I'm gay." What yeah, are you? like I don't easy. I'll say queer still too. Like yeah. I'll say anything. Gay, lesbian. I think was it? Yeah, G Flip said that they say they're a big lesbian. That's a, that's what they identify as a, a big, big lesbian. lesbian. They do always and say that. And by the way, G oh, yeah, is not big very big. G is tiny. G is tiny. So tiny. G is tiny. Also, I can't get over how tall you are. You're I taller than me. I you guys, giant. JoJo was taller than me. So if they're gonna be big lesbian. I'll be giant lesbian. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> per- I'll be like me- medium size. Medium Sh- lesbian. Medium. Sh- medium Sh- lesbian. Medium how much time do you even have to consume content? Oh my god. Like, None. are you None. watching stuff? Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. And I, anytime we put something on to watch or listen to, I'll fall asleep immediately. Because if I have You're that time, like, yeah, your I'm brain exalt. is off. Yeah. yeah. Fair. Yeah. That's so fair. I can't imagine that you would have time to do much of anything at all. And anytime I'm listening to music, this this sounds psycho, but I'll listen to mine so I can come up with new ideas. No, I think you that's know what I mean? fair. Um, okay. Last two things. First of all, do you think you'll have an ex on your podcast? <laughs> and do you want any advice from me? Yeah, yes. Can we advice? What would your What would your advice be? Oh my God! Prepare yourself for so much. I think I think I underestimated how much like it would reinvigorate shipping. You know, like, mm. I thought it would do the opposite, and it's done a little bit of both. I mean, both yep. things happen. So yeah. I think just mentally prepare yourself for that. Yeah, and then also like it's just not. It's a weird thing because it was such a vulnerable, great conversation that we had with each other. And I think when I finally actually posted it, I was also like, wow, do, does everyone deserve to get this conversation? Yeah. But at the end of the day, I think it was I stand by the decision. Yeah. Completely. No, I mean, look, I think it was brilliant. I think I think even just y'all representing that you can have a healthy relationship with an ex totally. is also just what the world needs right now. Like, I remember literally sitting at my studio and seeing like you po- you post like the sneak peek and I was like no fucking way no <laughs> fucking way because I also remember seeing the Taylor Swift concert footage being like no oh fucking God. way no. like and I, I, so I remember being on the edge of my seat but then I also like I've seen and I just it was cool to see 
the healthy representation of like you don't need to hate yeah and also like you can go through i mean we went through actual controversy with each other too and still made it through on the other side which ex would you have on your podcast i think about that all the time and that's why i will not have any of that on my podcast no i I'd have one of my I'd have my ex boyfriend on. He really? was sweet. He was a cute little Mormon boy. We, sweet. Yeah, we we had some fun times. We uh, did literally nothing. We <laughs> went on Taco Bell dates and we kissed occasionally. <laughs> um, <laughs> that was it. Sounds like it a good boyfriend. Cute. He was great. He was great. Okay, so um, the boyfriend could come on the podcast. Yeah. Do you have guests on your podcast usually? I did in the beginning, but now I don't. You just do it by yourself. Um, yeah, because the stuff that I talk about, it's better for me to just ramble. You're just kind of like rambling yeah yeah i don't know i mean i have a good relationship with one of my exes and the other one i actually had to talk to a couple of weeks ago mm. um because she needed something from me oh wow and she was like also sorry for the way that i was um when things went down between us um i look back now and i really regret it and i'm really sorry what i put you through and i was like honestly like it's fine i laugh about it um and the other one i will never talk to again till the day i die ever um (laughs) god so i'd probably pick the healthy relationship three layers there yeah yeah i feel like the healthy relationship one and the world knows who that one is like i you guys had posted content together also right yeah like not a ton but people knew exactly people are gonna know who you're talking about people for sure will know who i'm talking about my original you know people always love you with your first and I I've kind of realized like yeah <laughs> you know oh I know and I I think and you can probably relate to this too I had to get to a place where I was like and I will always have love for my first mm-hmm, like, for sure yes the bad started to outweigh the good but the good was great and mm-hmm. I'm gonna hold on to that great and I'm gonna just keep my life pushing you yeah, know what totally. I mean like but I will always have that special place in my heart even though i don't want it anymore like 100 special place also the longer the time goes between when you're in that relationship you will like learn to appreciate it more and more absolutely because you the bad stuff you kind of honestly forget you forget about and you grow and you have other bad yeah. stuff and then you like, fall in love with other people and the and love that was there turns into something completely different completely different yeah Puppy love. yeah it's unique, a unique experience. Okay, last question. Okay, shout out again to Hinge for sponsoring this episode of X's and O's. I appreciate y'all so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I really believe that the best thing about Hinge when it comes to dating and trying to meet people is the prompts because you have something built in to help you start flirting. I think when you just have pictures, that could be so much more stressful. So the prompts are so helpful and they have their LGBTQ plus prompts. I highly recommend you guys check them out and answer one or two or whatever, multiple. Last time I talked to you guys about Hinge, I said if I were building my own profile, I would use the uh, the first time I knew I was gay prompt and say it was when I exclusively wore tankinis because I do truly believe there is a tankini to queer pipeline. But I also believe there is a wearing your dad's suit when he comes home from work to queer pipeline. So if you've ever done that, please let me know. But also, I think any answer, as long as it's something that someone can build off of and flirt with you and like joke about, you are set. You are set. Give yourself a leg up. Use an LGBTQ plus prompt. Use Hinge. Download Hinge with the link in my bio. Find the love of your life. Did your team want you to wear the outfit you wore to the iHeartRadio? That was all me. Yeah. I I wanted to do that. They were like, what are you going to wear? And I was like, I will only go if I can wear my Beast costume. And it was honestly just because I loved the costume and just wanted to get another wear out of it. Yeah. I was like, I just want to do it again. Like, Did, I just, they, want, did they say do it? Yeah. They were like, all right, go for Because it. I think the craziest thing about that is you got so much... People were talking about it, obviously, still talking about it. People, yep. SNL's talking about it. But more people talked about you on that red carpet than Beyonce. Mm-hmm. That's insane. Goal achieved. Like, that. <laughs> yeah. I no. mean, I just think that I was there's... watching the views all night that night, just being like, wow. Yeah. yeah. I just don't, I'm like, do people, I feel like people don't understand how calculated you are in the decisions that you're and making. And that's the thing is, like, my, my extended, my mom was like, fuck yeah, if you want to wear that, that's what you're wearing. Yeah. My extended team was like, mm, is that a good choice? Like, don't you want to, like, we can, and I was like, no, like yeah, that, yeah. we want people to talk. Here's how we're going to get them to talk. Yeah. Like, Miley wearing a nude outfit and fucking herself with a foam finger. You're still talking about it. Tell me any other person that performed that year. Any other person. You're, I mean, at you're, any you're, other award show. You're literally not wrong at all. You know all. what I mean? Yeah, and, totally. And 
So I think sometimes it's about not being afraid of the controversy or the risk or the, like you said, Beyonce. Yeah, that's crazy. Nuts. Do you think you would ever walk a red carpet, though, and, like, do something, like, like an extreme of trying to, like, be, like, full glam, like... I have before when I was in my Dancing with the Stars phase. I wore my pretty pink fluffy dress. Yeah. Strapless. But like maybe a suit. Like what about if you went like, oh, gee, would like would you do that? No, I just wore a suit to my best friend's wedding. And because he was like, it's black tie, like yeah. ball gown. And I was like, Nick, I am not busting no out dress. a fucking ball gown. There's no way. And he was like, you can wear a suit. And I was like, sick, I'll be in a suit. And I was I was feeling it. Really? I Did was, you post anything in that? Um, I don't think I have. No, I I'm should. Like, I, I want to see. I should. I, I, it's in my dump, actually, that I was going to chuck up today. Um, there's a little okay, post well, of I'll it. Okay, I'll be looking. Um, um, do you think you'd wear a suit in your own wedding? I've thought about this a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Like a full rhinestone suit. <laughs> of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, this has been amazing. Yo, Do you feel good about I everything? I feel so great. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you for coming. Thank you for being kind to me. Thank Always. you for asking me the hard hitters and and just being a good human being. I can't being wait for everyone model. to see your music and hear your music <gasps> Mate, and see I'm your so videos. Excited. The, the music that I've heard is fucking awesome, honestly. I'm like, I'm stoked. Thank you. I will be listening to that and Karma forever and ever. Thank you. Uh, Okay, you guys can follow JoJo and all her socials. I'll put them all in the link below. And yeah, keep an eye out for the music that's coming out. Yo, appreciate you. Yeah.